it's when you start to go the other in the other end of that and and people find their there's the more controversial talk around pe- trans women and i mean with the olympics having just gone you have people like laurel hubbard who competed and having actually listened to your conversation with um rich roll in in the podcast you did with him you said something in there which was really eye-opening and then i kind of went into it a little bit more and watched more athletes that were competing in that space and you said trans athletes are not dominating like it's you know, people are getting this wrong it's people are reading the the spectrum and they're going to this far far-fetched imaginary space creating a headline and making it fact and and that was so true like and and Laurel Hubbard was a great example that people were like well she's just going to turn up at the event and she's going to win everything and didn't qualify I don't think got through qualifying I'm not sure but it didn't didn't get on the podium that's for sure um, yeah she was the first athlete out she was the the very first yeah. athlete out so yeah I mean you're absolutely right the key number to remember here is zero <laughs> there have been <laughs> zero trans athletes dominating in sports and uh, there have been zero problems in the United States with trans athletes in high school there have been zero cases of a trans athlete taking a scholarship from a cisgender athlete um, I know of zero athletes, transgender athletes, who have actually gotten scholarships, to, athletic scholarships to go to college uh, in the United States. And I know a lot of trans athletes and I mentor a lot of, of young people. So, you know, I think that it really has been massively blown out of proportion intentionally because yeah. in the United States and globally, it has become a political issue um, where, you know, it's it's really... People are using tweets and headlines as as facts, like you said, and there's so much nuance. I mean, just even when I was explaining to you the different ways to transition, right? You can imagine like that not all trans athletes fall within, uh, you know, I, I am a, I'm a case study of one. <laughs> and so while I share my experience and I, and I try to be uh, visible for other people to see me, it doesn't mean that every trans athlete uh, who's a trans man is going to be like me and is going to follow the same steps and the same journey that I've done. And, and so that's where it becomes really complicated when we start to talk about the, there's, there's more nuance to it than just saying trans athletes can play here. And this is the rule. Mm. And that's why we have a patchwork of policies. And that's also why we've seen global attacks in, in specifically in the UK, where there are several hate groups that have been leading the global charge against transgender athletes. It, it, again, it comes from miseducation and the the lack of understanding of the realm in which they're d- discussing and this whole uh, idea that like s- someone who has been a, a man for 30 years, and it tends to be in, in power sports, so powerlifting and, and, and MMA. Like MMA, there was the, the fight, I forget her name, um, she fought recently and won and then there was controversy it was actually just before september 11th but i watched that i watched that fight and she won but it's not like she dominated that fight she was taking blows like she was getting hit and hard and the woman that she was fighting was six foot and had i think like six inches on reach so or if you literally put these two fighters up against each other on stats you're like that one should win and it was a chokehold that won it and it was it was poor defensive work from the other fight the fighter who lost and and at the same time she agreed to get in the cage it's there's all of these steps that people have gone into but the headline was trans woman beats woman in mma fight and that just just clickbait and people get onto it or swipe past it and go god what ridiculous thing that is and that's where if you actually, it didn't take me long to figure all this out. It's it's not like this was mm-hmm. stuff that needed deep research. It was it took me ten minutes to watch the fight, understand what was going on, find out a little bit about that athlete. What is what is the process that's gone through here? And okay, this is this is not as criminal that you're all making it out to be. Right, and specifically in MMA, which people love to come back to, you know, she is the second MMA fighter that that I know of who is a trans woman. And, you know, MMA is a, a, it's a violent sport. People do get bones broken. They do get choked out. They do get knocked down. And so to say that, you know, a trans athlete is causing uh, exponentially more harm than any other athlete who's out there throwing punches and kicking people in the face, like, is just kind of ridiculous. Um, But, but you're right. Like people really do take that 
a stereotypical version of, you know, I always say it's like people think an NFL linebacker is going to say that they're suddenly, you know, identify as a woman and then go dominate in college, you know, basketball or something like it just doesn't happen. And it hasn't happened. It's not going to happen because if people understand how our, how our world is set up, no one assigned male at birth is going to pretend to be a woman to gain athletic you know, um, advantage in, in women's sports. Like that just isn't going to happen. Uh, so, you know, it, it's really based on myths and misconceptions and, and this fear of domination, this fear of, of fear of trans people, I guess. Like mm-hmm. the, when I try to think about yeah. it, what, what is it actually? Um, because it, I don't, I don't truly believe that cisgender men are that invested in protecting women's sports because here in the United States, the same people who are saying that they're trying to protect girls and women in the very next conversation or the previous conversation before that have been trying to take away cisgender women's rights to bodily autonomy, to making Mm. choice about reproduction, you know, like things like that. So I don't believe that it's cisgender men trying to protect women. I don't believe that all of these men, and it is largely men who are introducing this legislation, are are invested in protecting women's sports, that they are buying tickets to games or watching women's games on TV. I don't believe they could name their favorite, you know, women women athletes. And so, you know, I think there's a lot of problems that are wrapped up in this, and it's not about what they say it's about.